Welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit, better known as the Risa Church. The story of this beautiful church starts in the middle of the 17th century. At that time, Risa was only a small but prosperous coastal village. For the inhabitants, the life was good, except one thing, they had no church of their own. Then in the 19th of June 1646 a group of people went to the king's castle in Oslo to ask for permission to build one. The king gave his permission, provided they could care for it themselves, and build it on their own expenses. The Risa people promised to do so, and went happily home to start the construction. The work was finished in the summer of 1647, and the result was a beautiful log-built cruciform church, inspired by Dutch design, and they named it the Church of the Holy Spirit. For a long time it stood with its bare log walls. In 1721 it was finally covered with planking on the outside as well as the inside. A new bell tower was constructed in 1733. A sacristy added in 1739, and finally external gallery entrances was built on each cross arm in 1753. Since that time, the exterior has been left virtually unchanged. Now let's go inside. When you enter the church vestibule, you will among other relics notice King Christian's monogram to the left, and a 19th century chasuble on the right side. The beautiful gilted wood carving that is mounted over the entrance to the church room, is done in 1778. The church room itself is painted in the original colors, though the walls have been repainted, the sky painting in the ceiling is the original and has been left untouched. Now, let us take a look at one of the galleries. You will notice that one of them have paintings of Jesus and the seven apostles in the front. They are probably from the Renaissance, and it is believed that they are imported from another church. Everything you see in the church room is given to the church as gifts or paid for by the inhabitants of Risa. Like for example the beautiful Brock chandeliers. The oldest one is made in 1678, and the youngest in 1703. The pulpit is done in typical Baroque style, carved by master carver Christopher Ritter in 1664. On the front is the images of the six virtues. Bravery, wisdom, justice, love, believe and hope. The altarpiece is a painting inspired by Rubens' great painting The Last Supper. The artist is unknown to this day. The legend says, that the painting was originally done for a church in Riga, but the ship that carried it was shipwrecked outside Reeser. Luckily the painting was saved and given to the church as a gift before 1669. The beautiful frame is also a work done by Christopher Ritter in 1674. At the top of the frame we can see Jesus in his grave, and over Jesus arising, flanked by paralyzed Roman soldiers. The ship model hanging from the ceiling is a model of the 42-gun Dano Norwegian frigate Nyadin. The ship was destroyed and 112 crew members lost in a gunfight with the British ship of the line Dictator in the battle in Linger Harbor 6th of July 1812. The church got its first organ in 1776, and even though it has been replaced by a modern one, they have managed to keep the front of the 1776 Blucher organ intact. Throughout all these centuries, the people of Reeser have kept their word that was given to the king 467 years ago. They have taken care of their church, but they also had to fight for it, like for example in the year of 1861 when a disastrous fire destroyed the town's center and turned 248 buildings into ashes. 
While the men was fighting the fire in the center, the women tried to save the church. Carried hundreds of buckets of water from a pond close by to keep the church cold and wet to prevent it from catch fire. As the wind pushed the flames closer and closer, it is said that in the most critical moment, the priest fell to his knees in front of the altar, folded his hands, and prayed. Lord please help us. And like a miracle, the wind turned, and the church was saved. Since the word was first given in front of the king in 1646, the people of Reser have kept their word and proudly defended and taken care of their beautiful church. And the tradition goes on. The baptism of future generations is still carried out in the same baptismal font that has been used on hundreds of people before them. Thank you for listening.